Hi everyone, Bryphone here, back with another video, and today I've got one for the blue team. I want to talk about Mark of the Web bypasses and what that means. The Mark of the Web is something that Windows does whenever an executable or any program or file is downloaded from the internet. It creates an alternate data stream that provides an identifier to a file to let Windows know that that came from the internet, and it even records the place that it was downloaded from. Now, this is really significant for a, for a forensics perspective, but what we've seen attackers doing recently is using ISO files. And what happens there is the mark of the web gets applied to the ISO file itself, but not the files inside of the ISO, allowing them to run as trusted. So what this means is that you as a defender need to be able to detect when an ISO is mounted. This is an uncommon process nowadays. Most people don't even have CD-ROMs in their computers anymore. So I'll show you how to detect that. But first, let's take a look at the significance of the mark of the web and what that looks like and what that looks like when it's being applied. So first, we've got our typical Windows 10 host over here. We've got uh, MS Edge running. And I downloaded an ISO from Malware Nazar, Remco's Rat, and I put it up in my Kali box to simulate the downloading of an ISO. And then I also have just a standard executable download, which is Rubius, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll do a typical executable download first. So if I come over here to my window and I choose hagrid.exe, this is my obfuscated version of Rubius. And I go to, it says this is not commonly downloaded because it's an executable, so I need to go keep. And then I'm going to go keep anyway. And what we're going to see over here in process monitor is successful write files for what was created from MS Edge. So we can see, especially these highlighted right here, is a user's Clint Barton downloads hagrid.exe, the zone identifier was successfully written. So what that means is if we come over here to PowerShell and we go get item, oh, we'll go get item first and then we'll show get content. So get item shows us all of the different features of this file. But as you can see, we do have a zone identifier string here. So that means that it was able to successfully write the zone identifier and we'll show that file as blocked in Explorer. Now, if I do the same thing with get content, it will actually show me the stream identifier. And I can see zone ID three, which means it came from the internet, the URL that it was downloaded from and the host URL. So this is great information for a forensics perspective, but if it's something that's embedded in another executable, you won't get this. So if we come over here to Explorer now, and we'll go into Downloads, and we'll take a look at Hagrid, and we'll do the typical way that most users know that it came from the internet, and that's when you go to Properties, you'll see this file came from another computer and might be blocked due to help, due to help protecting this computer. And you would have to choose unblock and apply in a lot of situations to get this file to run. OK, well, that's great. It's good protection. But when we are taking a look at ISO files, the same thing does not apply. So we'll go ahead and we will I'll clear this here. I'm going to download an ISO file. So this is my Remco's rat ISO. And it is a typical ISO file containing malware. I actually downloaded this from Malware Bazaar. If you haven't downloaded things from Malware Bazaar, check them out. I just downloaded this sample and renamed it. So we'll go ahead and download the Rimcoast Rat ISO. And we'll see it's an ISO. And I don't know why Windows does this, but it immediately trusts it. It doesn't ask for any information like it does with executables, probably because it's not executable code. But we can see the zone identifier was written to the ISO file. Well, that's only a little bit helpful, right? So if I come back here and I go get content on the Remcos rat ISO, yeah, I have a zone identifier, but the content inside the ISO, I do not. 
So what does a user do when they get an ISO file or they're convinced to open an ISO file? They double click it and they choose open. And what that does is mount a drive and it mounts a CD-ROM drive. And inside there, you can see we have payment, payment notification three pdf.exe, right? So it's meant to look like a PDF, uh, even though they gave it the odd Excel icon and it's an executable file. So we're gonna take and we're gonna copy this off and put it in downloads just so you can see what that looks like. So we now have payment notification 3 pdf.exe in our downloads folder, and I'll pop back over here to uh, PowerShell, clear screen, and we'll go get content. Payment notifications 3 pdf.exe. And notice zone identifier is not present, it errors. So if I go get item, on this, you'll see there is no alternate data stream. No alternate data stream whatsoever. It's just the plain executable file. That's it. There's nothing here. So Windows will execute this as normal code. So if I go and I take a look at this, notice when I right click on this and I choose properties, there's nothing down here. It's not the same. If I go to this hagra.exe, same e executable, downloaded from the web, I see security, this came from another computer. So that's significant. What that means is an attacker who uses this ISO method can get an executable to run past a lot of the defenses of Windows. And Defender has been on this entire time. I haven't turned it off. There's been nothing to stop these. Uh, even the scanner of me moving it off the ISO onto box didn't detect anything and it didn't detect my, you know, lightly obfuscated Rubius. So this is what happens when ISO files are downloaded and a user is convinced to open them. So let's talk about the detection of this. So one of the best ways to detect this is event code 4663. Now this is a fairly expensive event from a SIM perspective, right? It's, it logs a lot. So, that being said, though, if you want this kind of protection and you have this SIM budget to spend, I recommend you do so because object access is as good as process logging in a lot of cases. Uh, you would get the process log event, but you might not know where that process came from if you're looking from a SIM perspective. Now, while that's loading, because I've got a lot of events here, let's jump over to the domain controller. And what you'll need is an advanced policy to turn this on in your environment. So you need advanced audit policy configuration, objects access, and then you'll need audit removable storage. And you want success and failure. So if you don't have that on in your group policy, you will never see the 4663 event that you would need to detect the mounting of an ISO. Let's go back over here to our Windows host. It is still loading. And it's erroring. Well, we'll jump over to SIM and we'll find it that way. So if we go to Elastic here and we go to Discover and we run event code 4663 and WinLog event data object name containing CD-ROM. And I always do this not to make sure that it's not somebody running a setup, right? This helps when admins are doing legitimate functions. You just do an add not setup.exe. And notice right here, the very first event we see is that Remco's rat uh, notification when I open that ISO. So if I go into this detail and we get to the actual log message here, you can see Clint opened the object name device CD-ROM payment notifications 3 pdf.exe. So this was touched. So that means, hey, you've got a user that mounted an ISO and loaded an executable from it. And in a lot of these attacks we're seeing lately, this is a very common technique. So writing the rules is quite simple. Event code 4663 and win log event data object name, just looking for CD-ROM. It will always show CD-ROM in here, 
Now, it may have a different number. It might be one, two, three, four, or five at the end of that, but it will always show that CD-ROM and device slash CD-ROM. Even though it's not a CD-ROM, it's mounting it as if it's a virtual CD-ROM because it's an ISO file. And it will tell you what happened at the time to access this. Notice I just read the data. I didn't execute anything. Now, in a lot of these attacks, you'll see the execution here as well. You'll see a process execution event after that, or you'll see some kind of uh, method of execution happening right after they open that ISO. At that point, you know the host is most likely compromised or has some kind of malware on it. So, but let's take a look at our rule now. If we go to alerts here, we should have a bunch. And this is one other area to note. It will create a ton of these 4663 events whenever an ISO is mounted. So just beware, you're going to get a bunch when somebody does this. You can set up a threshold if you'd like. I like to see everything. I like to be alerted on everything, but you can certainly set up a threshold. So if we go to view details here and we go to our table, and we're going to need to get pretty far in here. Let's see, I think it's page seven. Uh, we can see right here the winlog event data object name right there. There's your pdf.exe, your read data event right there. And then our query for the rule, if we go back to the initial page here, page two. Let's see, where's my query? Here it is, event code 4663, just like I showed. So that is how you detect an ISO being mounted and used in your environment for malicious purposes. I'm seeing this a lot. So I would recommend that anybody who can get this event into SIM and uh, is monitoring their endpoint space, that they monitor for ISOs being mounted. It's not a common thing. Most people don't even have CD-ROMs anymore. Uh, they don't download ISOs from the internet and mount it. You may get the occasional false positive of an admin doing something or trying to install uh, some kind of operating system because those are still commonly on ISO format. But if you see ISO and you don't see your typical files in there, you see something like uh, like we're seeing here, PDF, uh, payment PDF.exe, that's a pretty dead giveaway that it's malware. So. Uh, I would definitely take a deeper look when you see these events happening. So that's all I've got today. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, met a milestone with the channel. Uh, we're finally monetized, so thank you for that. And uh, I'll leave you once again with Hack the Planet to Defend Better. Thank you.